This DVD has three sections. Part B of this DVD will lead you through the process of floodplain risk management as per the New South Wales Floodplain Development Manual. Steps 1 to 6 should be viewed in order to appreciate the full process of floodplain risk management and its advantages in reducing the impacts of flooding. There's a great deal that needs to be done since the recent disaster councillors and according to the New South Wales Floodplain Development Manual, the first step to be taken is to set up a Floodplain Risk Management Committee. Now that committee is going to consist of a chair, councillors, DECWA will have representatives, the council staff, we want engineers, we want planners and we want environmental officers on there. The local community reps are going to be integral in having on this committee. Of course there's going to be industry and environmental groups. There'll be other state and commonwealth agencies that will need to be on here and of course specialist consultants are going to need to be part of the process. I move that we establish this group and that group meet without delay. We'll have the consensus of the councillors. Thank you councillors. The committee can be supported by a technical subcommittee made up of state government representatives, emergency management engineers and planners and local government engineers and planners. The primary objective of the New South Wales Flood Prone Land Policy is to reduce the impact of flooding and flood liability on individual owners and occupiers of flood prone property and to reduce private and public losses resulting from floods utilising ecologically positive methods wherever possible. In layman's terms that means to minimise the damage to property and the risk to life of the local community using the most cost-effective measures. Before this can happen, we need to know exactly how the water behaves, what the risks are, and how these risks can be managed most effectively. This requires a very large amount of research and work to be done, and the Floodplain Risk Management Committee has the task of steering this work using the risk management approach outlined in the New South Wales Floodplain Development Manual. In this regard, it is important that the full range of flood risks to people and property are adequately addressed, such that where possible, communities are not overly reliant on emergency services for flood evacuation and flood insurance for property flood loss cover. Today, as the new Flood Risk Management Committee, we begin the enormous task of finding the most cost-effective solutions to Council's flooding problems. It's a big task and there's a lot to be done but we will be rewarded further down the track. The first thing we need to do is to define the catchments and prioritise them in terms of which pose the greatest flooding risk. We can then get the highest priority flood studies underway. As I see it, our biggest problem is that we don't have the resources to undertake these types of technical studies. We also don't have the funds to engage a consultant with the necessary expertise. To assist councils with preparing studies and in implementing works, grant funding is normally offered annually from state and federal governments. Currently this funding is normally offered on a two state and federal government to one local government ratio. Projects are prioritised based upon a scoring system agreed to by the FMA and managed by the Office of Environment and Heritage. The FMA sit on the State Assessment Committee that oversees the prioritisation process. Applications for funding are received annually and grants are announced on an annual basis. Very well. I propose that the committee recommends to Council that it, with the assistance from DECW, prepare a suitable brief. Once funding has been confirmed, we would then invite competitive tenders in order to complete our priority flood studies. All those in favour? Once an application has been accepted for grant funding assistance, the Floodplain Risk Management Committee then have the confidence to recommend to Council that the related project may be initiated. At this stage, the committee may also ready itself for community input into the floodplain risk management process. Local individuals and groups could be invited to submit an application to become temporary members of the Floodplain Risk Management Committee 
for the duration of the relevant study. A limited number of applicants are selected by the committee and subsequently included as temporary members.